You know, when I first started fishing from a kayak, it was mostly ponds and fishing for sunfish and bass. Um, eventually, I, I, I spent a little time chasing after some catfish, and once I started catching a few, I, I was like, oh, this is way more fun. These fish are way more fun to catch than the other ones out of a kayak, and they pretty quickly became my favorite uh, fish to target. Um, and that's what I spend most of my time fishing for now is catfish. So first off, I, I made a few videos that sort of were just intended to just show people just how much fun it was and how exciting it could be. And then I followed those up. I've got some videos out there sharing some uh, strategies and tactics. Uh, but I wanted, to, I wanted to put together a series of videos here that just focused on the tools. Um, so I figured we'd start right at the beginning, how to rig your kayak uh, to target catfish. So um, that's where I'm going to start today. If you're new here and this is your first time at the channel, my name is Denny. This is Float Fish Adventure, my channel. Uh, my channel's purpose here is to inspire people to get out and have some adventure, to give them some information so those adventures can be more successful, and to try and do it all in an entertaining way. So that's what we're going to do here today. I'm uh, going to start right at the beginning and give you the basics on how to rig your kayak to fish for catfish. So first off, uh, I do want to focus on the rigging itself and not on, um, you know, buying a kayak because that's a huge topic and uh, that would be an entire video. Uh, but I know a lot of people who are interested in rigging their first kayak up for uh, catfishing uh, may be looking for uh, a kayak and haven't got any purchase. So I will touch on just a couple of things. Uh, very, very briefly. So there are three main components to a kayak that you need to keep in mind. Um, stability, weight, and speed. And those are sort of the big three. They form kind of a triangle, if you can picture it. And the more improvement you get on one, then you're usually making a trade-off on one or the other. Um, you don't get all three things all right, at the top end. And the more you get closer to, you know, getting more of each thing, then the more the price goes up. So what you want and what's going to be the most important factor for you is going to depend a lot on how you want to fish. You know, if you're going to be putting in at boat ramps and fishing big lakes, then weight's probably not going to be a problem. What's going to be most important to you is speed because you're going to be going long distances and you want to have, a, have it be efficient when you're paddling. Uh, if you're putting it in, in smaller rivers and you're going to put in here and just float and fish your way downstream to the bottom, then you don't much care about speed because you're just going to be floating. Um, stability might be the big thing for you then. Or if you're going to be putting in under bridges and not at boat ramps where you're doing a lot of bushwhacking to and from the water, then weight is going to be an issue because the heavier that is, the harder it's going to be to get to your spots. So um, those are sort of the big three. The other two things I would say you want to pay attention to uh, and one is huge, is comfort. Uh, you, I don't care if you have the fastest, lightest, most stable kayak out there. Um, if you sit in it and your leg goes to sleep in an hour and a half, that kayak is going to end up sitting in your garage, and that's no good. So if there's one argument to be made for getting in a kayak and paddling it around, feeling it out before you buy it, it's that. You want to make sure that you're going to be able to sit in it for a, a long period of time, and it's going to stay comfortable. Uh, molded seats, I would say avoid molded seats because molded seats have no adjustments built in um, and they get very uncomfortable very quick. Uh, so just make sure you got something that's got a good seat that's going to be comfortable. Uh, finally, the other thing uh, is just the ability to do more rigging. And it's nice to have that stuff built in, uh, but if it's not there, you can add a lot of accessories to add accessories to. Things like tracks, things like pad eyes. Uh, so pay attention to it, look for it. Um, but it's not a deal breaker. As I'm going over the rigging stuff, uh, I will point out some things to keep in mind if you're in the market to buy. Otherwise, just sort of point out trying how to work around it and work with what you have if you already have a kayak. So, with uh, that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to the rigging. Okay, so first up, uh, the best place to start is going to be rod holders. So, when it comes to rod holders, a few things to keep in mind. Um, there are a lot of different styles. Uh, there are tube rod holders, there are the basic um, uh, in, in, insert slots so you just slide it in, um, and then there are the adjustable ones. I recommend the adjustable rod holders, um, something that you're going to be able to rotate around and up and down so that you have some uh, variability depending on how you want to fish. Um, 
the big thing, honestly, rod holders are mostly a matter of personal preference. The big thing about the rod holder isn't going to be so much the holder itself. It's going to be the base and how you have it mounted. These track mounts, these track mounts come in a couple of different, right? So like this track, see this track is just mounted. This is a factory mounted track. It's just on top. It's just, it's, there's a rivet. You can see the rivet. There's a rivet there. It's riveted through and just mounted to the surface. Um, some models, some brands, uh, it won't be mounted on top. It'll be recessed into the plastic. Um, those are going to be a lot more solid. You're not going to get as much flex pulling on the side like this. Now for Channel Cat or Flathead and smaller rivers, um, this is going to be just fine and that's not going to be such a big deal. Um, the Channel Cats will hit hard uh, a lot, and but they're not big enough to cause real damage. And the Flathead, while well, they could be big enough to cause real damage, uh, they don't usually hit like a freight train. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is how you have your rods angled. So if you've got your rod angled uh, coming out the front or even out of 45, um, there's not much give there, right? I mean, that's still pretty solid no matter how much torque is being put on that rod. As you come out this way, as you come out this way, you start to get more flex on the side here, and that's pulling at that track. See how that's pulling a little bit? Now, where this will be a problem is, let's say, let's say that you're fishing for blue cats, and you're drifting in deep water for blue cats, and you've got your rod straight out the side. Right now, if you've got your rod set like this, because that's how you like to fish, and you've got a track mounted on top, and a big blue cat comes and buries your rod down, I can't even do it without pulling it out in the water here, but you can see you're gonna get a whole lot of flex, and that is gonna weaken over time. So that's something you're definitely gonna wanna keep in mind. Now, it's something you can consider if you haven't bought a kayak yet. If you already have a kayak, uh, you may be stuck with what you, you've got. So if you need more strength than this, even if you've got a factory one, um, you can replace it out with one that has the metal backing. And it's at least not gonna rip out. The rivets, you know, will get weak and you can get one to start to tear and then the whole thing will come. Um, if you've got the metal plate backing on the back side of it, um, then you'll be able to stop that. You're still going to have a lot of flex and a lot of torque, uh, but that metal backing on the back will keep it from, from tearing through um, down the road. Another option would be to not use track mounted bases. And if you have a, a clean spot where you can mount the bases directly to your kayak, um, you're going to get a much more solid uh, foundation uh, by doing that. Uh, that's going to really depend on the layout of your particular kayak. You'd have to look at the different uh, the base options that are screw-in. Um, most of them are fairly small and there's got four, four uh, contact points where you drill and, and, and put your screws in. So that's an option for you if you need something sturdier, uh, which I would definitely recommend. If you're, if you're fishing for blue cats and you're doing drifting, like suspend drifting, I would really consider a base that's mounted directly to the kayak and not on a track. Another option is if you have a track that's recessed, um, like I said, some models have the track that doesn't sit on top, it's actually recessed in the groove. Those are more rigid. What you can do with those is you can actually get a base that's got the four holes and you can, that's meant to be drilled directly into the kayak and you can mount two of them, mount in the track, in the recessed track and the rest of the base flushes over the top of the flat and that creates a lot less torque on on the track itself because it sits more flush. So those are things to consider uh, about how you want to mount your rod holders to your kayak. Uh, the next thing is where and why. Another thing to consider is that you've got rod holders for your working rods which means you're using them to fish and you may or may not need a different option for transport. Um, so let's say I've got four rods and I might have just two rod holders in front 
and maybe a couple of tubes in the back that let my rod stick straight up if I'm out on open water that's no problem so that's a good storage for transport um, but if I'm going down a, a smaller river where there's a lot of overhang then I'm going to end up hanging my rods up and getting myself in trouble uh, out on the water so I need a storage option if I've got more than the two rods up here I need a storage option for the other rods I either need a way to store them in the kayak or I need a way to store them so that they stay down low and they're not in the way. So whether or not your, your working rod holders is going to work is going to depend on how you fish. But you're going to want to think about that before you drill anything or uh, put anything up. These might be great where they are to sit and, and cast out and fish. Uh, but they might not be good for paddling downstream. Or uh, they might be in the way of your paddle stroke. Wherever you're going to have your rods while they're moving has to be out of the way of your paddle stroke. Right? So if your working rod holders don't take your rods out of the way of your paddle stroke, then you have to have someplace else to put them while you're paddling. That's why having some sort of a rod holder uh, option in the back is always a good idea. Just make sure you keep in mind uh, whether you want them sitting, stay, if you're going to have them standing up, if you need to have them laying down, or if you've got some other option in the kayak. So those are all the things you need to consider with rod holders. So once you've chosen a rod holder that's going to be the right rod holder for you and your style of fishing and you have them uh, positioned uh, so that they're out of the way when you're traveling and uh, convenient for you when you're fishing, um, the next thing that you're going to have to uh, consider is how you're going to position yourself. And positioning is arguably the most difficult aspect of kayak fishing. Um, it can be a struggle sometimes and that's, that's just part of the game. Um, so, uh, some of the different positioning techniques, I mean, you'll, you'll use maybe an anchor or a stakeout pull or a mud stick um, or even a drift sock and those are all going to be sort of the topic of future videos. Uh, but whatever you're using to position yourself, you're going to need to attach that to a point in your kayak and that's what we're going to talk about right now. Now, the simplest and most straightforward method of doing that is to install an anchor trolley and an anchor trolley um, is basically a ring on a pulley system that runs up and down the length of your kayak. Um, a couple things to keep in mind about an anchor trolley. Uh, first off, it will make your life easier. Um, they're not a solution for everything um, and especially for catfishing uh, it seems like that if you're going to install an anchor trolley install one on both sides because especially if you're doing river fishing you know rivers bend both ways sometimes you got to tie off on one side sometimes the other so um, one on each side if you're going to install them which is really what I recommend when you do install them um, one thing to keep in mind especially if you're going to be in current at all is you want the anchor trolley you want the anchor trolley to come back as far as it can towards the end of your kayak. Um, the further you get it back here, the less sway you're going to get um, if you've got any current. Uh, so, for example, if you've got an anchor trolley and it stops here and you're in current, the current's not going to let you sit straight like this. The current is going to catch the back of the kayak and it's going to want to turn it so that you're, it's pushing the kayak this way. More of it will go out towards the front, and then the back will be fight, fighting. I mean, the current's just going to grab it and pull it. You're going to sway. You're going to have a lot of slop. Uh, it can get kind of dicey. So the further back you get your anchor trolley run, um, and you can run your tie-off point, the more of that you can avoid. I have mine run all the way from the back, way up here. The next anchor trolley that I install on my next kayak won't do that. Um, I find that I just don't. I don't need most of this most of the time. Um, I use this section a lot and I would probably just do one from about here to the back end and just do a much shorter one. Now, having said that, I will say that I probably only use my anchor trolley about 20% of the time. When I need it, I need it and I really need it. Uh, but I do fish a lot of brush and I tend to tie off real close to the brush. What I do is I will actually run my line 
Um, I have contact points here where my rod holders are. I'll just run my line around the rod holder. I'll, I'll, I'll tie it or clip it up in there, run it around here and pull it as close with my brush clips as I can. Let me show you. So I might clip off, I'm a tree. I might clip off to my tree and then I actually have these little loops in my line because I do this so often. Uh, and I'll just loop that on the back of that and that keeps me pretty good. Or if there's current and I gotta get super tight, then I won't, I won't loop this. I will actually uh, keep this as close as possible. The tighter you are tied off to anything, the less sway and slop you get. And that's really key. Um, so, so the anchor trolley, as hard as it is to say, the anchor trolley is an absolute necessity like, like 15 or 20% of the time. You can get by without having one, um, but there will be times where you're really, really struggling because you don't have one. So my recommendation is that you'll probably want to get one for each side, at least down the road a bit. Um, from the beginning, you may find that you want to see if you've got good tie-off points and, and get a feel for what your need is with an anchor trolley to see how far up and back you need to go. Um, definitely put them on the to get to list though uh, when you're rigging things up. Next up is bait management, right? So, I mean, catfishing means bait. There's no way around that. And when you're talking bait, you're talking about a cooler of some sort. Now you have some different options depending on, are you primarily fishing uh, for flathead and you want to use a lot of live bait or are you going to be basically fishing for blue catch and channel cat and you want to use primarily cut bait uh, if you're using cut bait you have some more cooler options because you probably can get away with soft-sided coolers um, depending on you know how big and how much bait you're you're bringing with you um, but you've got to have some place to store your bait and that's going to be a cooler uh, so you want to figure out ideally Right, this is my this is my this is my live well. This is my big one. I have two. I have a small one and a big one. Um, this is my big one. I don't have it rigged up right now. Uh, I'm gonna do a whole other video on the live wells as well. Um, but you've got to have a spot. If you're gonna make one, or if you're gonna buy one, you need to know what your dimensions are. Right, you need to know what where's it gonna go on your kayak, and figure out what that space is, and then get something that's gonna fit in that space. Um, don't run out and buy a live well, you know, and then get home and be like, oh, well, I, I don't really have a good way of getting this on here. Um, it's much better to pay close attention to the space you're working with and either buy or build something that's going to work for you. Most kayaks, obviously, most fishing kayaks have uh, room in it for a crate of some sort. And one of the bonuses is with catfishing, you don't, you may not need the crate. Uh, the tackle is sort of downsized compared to what it would be for like bass fishing or something. Um, so that spot usually will work well for the cooler, uh, but you just have to consider where it's going to go, how big it needs to be, and get something that's going to fit and work in the space that you need, because you are going to have to carry a cooler with you. The tackle itself really, really depends on the kayak. A lot of kayaks have all sorts of tackle pockets and places to house, you know, the little tackle bags or tackle containers. Um, that's great if you can leave your kayak rigged up all the time. Um, and then all those little storage pockets in places are beautiful. You've got your gear exactly where it needs to be all the time. You just load up and go. Um, if you have to car top or do anything where you're taking your kayak apart, every different place that you put something becomes one more thing you have to take apart and put together. Um, I car top mine. I find it a lot easier. All my tackle, all my tackle goes in the bag. I got a tackle bag here. Um, this has all my main stuff in it. Uh, my this is my I just have a binder that's like my primary when I have to re-rig everything I need is really just in this binder and then you know I've got floats and backup stuff um, my timer uh, bulk things my shears all that stuff goes in the bag headlamp my phone stays in there and that all fits in mine that fits nicely right behind my seat um, another option is a, a backpack tackle bag um, sometimes you can mount them to the back of your seat or uh, even a deck bag. Uh, sometimes you, if you've got stuff you want to throw in, you can throw in a deck bag and mount that to your seat. 
all good options. But just keep in mind, the two main storage options, there's actually, there's actually three main storage options, right? You've got to have a place for the cooler. You've got to have a place for your, your primary tackle. And if you plan on doing any sort of overnight fishing or camping, you have to have an idea of where your camping bag is going to go. The best way to do that is to streamline what you think you're going to take. And again, that'll be probably a different video, the, 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 the camping bag. Uh, mine all fits in one. I have one big like dry bag, boat duffel bag. Um, that's my limit. If it can't fit in there, it doesn't go with me. It doesn't need to. So, and I can fit that on a regular camping trip. I can fit it right in the back. If it's a fishing trip, then it will sit on top of my cooler, uh, right on the edge of it, and then strap to the top. Um, and then I still have the hatch. Most kayaks have a hatch, so, you know, for uh, some of your extra things that you take all the time uh, that may not go in the bag. So, uh, you know, first aid kit, uh, repair tools, sunscreen, uh, stuff like that. Finally, you got to think about your accessories, all the extra goodies, the toys, right? And there's plenty of them. Um, number one, obviously, is going to be the fish finder. Do you have to have one? It depends. A lot of the smaller rivers that, that, that we fish, um, I don't bring my fish finder for that because I've been on them enough or I can, you know, basically read where I, I, I have good understanding where the holes are going to be and the spots I want to hit. Um, that said, when the water's up or if I'm on a new stretch, um, sometimes I will bring my fish finder just to try and uh, mark out any hidden features that I wouldn't be able to find. So, uh, especially in lake situations, if you're going to fish lakes at all, um, reservoirs, if you're going to do any drifting, you're going to want a fish finder because you're going to want to be able to find the channel. You're going to want to be able to find the ledges and the flats, know where those edges are. And most importantly for drifting is you're going to want to be able to maintain your speed. And having a fish finder with GPS is really the only rock solid way to know that your drift speed is where you want it to be. So you can get that bay uh, presentation uh, dialed in at exactly the right speed and get on more fish. I probably have the sun behind me. Sorry about that. So when it comes to mounting things like fish finders, uh, that's where your track systems are really going to shine. Cameras, fish finders, um, all sorts of different track mount systems. You can buy the little sections of track and you just find a good spot where you're going to mount things. Mount the track. Um, don't mount any of your other gear directly to your kayak. You're just going to be drilling a bunch of holes you don't want to drill. Um, especially when you decide later you want to move something or go to a different style. Uh, just mount the track. The track's not that expensive. It will work terrific even just just mounted straight on top of the plastic um, for all of that other gear. Uh, so my fish finder, my fish finder is all mounted to the track here. Um, my cameras, uh, my cameras I mount to, I have the Railblazer, uh, the Railblazer bases, and I really, really like those. Um, I like them because I like the Railblazer booms, the camera booms, they've got pressure fittings and so they move so I can adjust my cameras. Um, and that's, that's so I, I use this base so I can use this boom. And they have these bases um, that will go on the tracks, but anything with a long arm on it, uh, mounted to a, a point on a track, it's going to wobble. It's going to be more shaky. So this is just a lot more stable and sturdy for me. That's why I like those. Um, but definitely, um, definitely set up track uh, to mount most of your accessories. Um, I didn't move to mounting this base on directly until I was absolutely 100% that this is exactly the base. This is the boom I'm always going to use. I love it. It's perfect. This is exactly where I need it. And so um, once you get to that point, you want to mount something permanently, that's fine. But uh, especially in the beginning, uh, just mount the track and mount your accessories to the track. You'll be glad you did. I'm going to just take a, a second here to talk about the paddle too. You know, the paddle is not a, a distinctly uh, catfish oriented thing. Um, and you may already have a paddle. But something to keep in mind. Uh, if all you're doing is putting it in a river, a small river upstream and floating and fishing your way down, you can buy a cheap paddle. You can get a cheap paddle that's kind of heavy and durable, no sweat. Uh, if you're going to do a lot of paddling over on, like in lakes, or reservoirs, where you'd be drifting or paddling long distances, then you want to spend some extra money and you want to get a lighter paddle because your shoulders are really going to thank you. You know, you might not think that, you might not think that a pound of difference or a pound and a half is going to make a huge difference on a paddle. But it does. It absolutely does. Um, I have, I use this uh, uh, backwater paddle company, Assassin Paddle. I love this paddle. This paddle sort of 
almost looks like it might be a gimmick just because of all this stuff on it. But this hook, I fish brush all the time and I have to get up close to it and there is frequently like weird current seams and eddies and those are the spots I want to fish but trying to pull right up to something can become a challenge because once you get closer the water starts to shift and it can be you turn into a bull in a china shop trying to get up close with this paddle this paddle is I just grab it with the hook I get up close enough I reach out grab it with the hook and pull myself up snug and brush off and tie off with my brush clip in the back um, super simple very very effective uh, this paddle is not the lightest paddle on the market, but it feels very, very light in your hands. And uh, I will probably never own another paddle. I love this paddle. So this is another little plug. I got a video about the paddle too. But uh, I just want to say for catfishing, especially in heavy brush, um, a paddle a paddle that's going to let you grab things and hook to pull off close uh, is just going to help make you more stealthy. That's, that's why I like mine so much. So that's it with the paddles. All right, so quickly, in review, number one, rod holders. Uh, the rod holder of your choice that works good for the rods that you have. Um, mounted to the kayak itself in a way that's going to work long term for the type of fish you're fishing for and the type of places you're fishing. Whether that's track, whether that's bolted directly to the body of the kayak itself. Um, mounted in a position so that they're reachable and within your grasp while you're fishing and they work while you're fishing but they're also out of the way while you're paddling and covering your needs for uh, transportation and any extra rods number two the tie-off points uh, bare minimum you're going to need tie-off points towards the front and towards the rear where your line can at least go around or tie off directly to and uh, long term you're going to want an anchor trolley uh, for the full scope of all your different uh, tie-off needs. And then you will need some place on the inside of your kayak if you're running line around an access, a, a tie-off point on the back or the front, you'll need that line to come off and clip off somewhere inside on something. Number three, your storage. Um, Got to have a place for bait. Look at your kayak, figure out what's going to be the best cooler option that's going to give you uh, space for whatever type of bait you're going to be using whether it's just a cooler that needs to house some uh, cut bait with some ice or whether it's cooler that needs to have an aerator and uh, full water so you can carry some live bait with you also your tackle um, sometimes it's easier honestly to take a look at your kayak figure out what extra space you have and then organize your tackle and make the changes to your tackle system to work in your kayak whether it means you put it in a backpack on it on the back of your seat whether you put it in a bag, uh, whether you have slots and containers in um, in your kayak and you just separate everything and put stuff where it goes. Um, all that is going to get dialed in by you based on the tackle you have and the specific storage options that you have in whatever kayak you have. So, and that's part of the fun, you know, is dialing all that stuff in. Finally, all the extra accessories, cameras, fish finder, um, beer holder mounts, right? All that stuff, uh, all that stuff is perfectly suited uh, to put on track systems. So get yourself, uh, just buy the track system. Um, if it doesn't come with track, even if it does, putting on extra sections of track at different points, it's cheap, it's very, very functional, and it will go a long way towards dialing in your ride. That's really a big part of the fun of, of uh, owning a kayak and taking it fishing. I mean, just apart from how much fun it is, because it's a whole ton of fun. It's kind of like having a Jeep or a motorcycle. Everyone gets, everyone becomes unique, right? Everybody's kayak is dialed in so it suits them. And that doesn't happen on your first day out. That doesn't usually happen with your first kayak, even in the first season, right? It takes a couple of years where you really start to sort out what exact needs you have. And doing that over time is, is part of the fun where you get it just super dialed in and everything's right where you, right where you need it and it works out perfect for you. Uh, and it just, it just enhances your time on the water. So enjoy that process. Don't feel like you got to nail it the first time out um, because you won't. Uh, but if you cover these, if you take these things that we talked about today into consideration and you cover the basics 
um, you're going to be out on the water in position to start having a whole ton of fun catching some uh, nice nice catfish. So that's where I'm going to stop this one today. Like I said, uh, I'm going to do a series of uh, gear and rigging uh, videos. I'll have them all linked together in a playlist and probably have some pop-up cards here on this video as I get those posted. So again, uh, if you're a subscriber, if you're not a subscriber, um, subscribe and click the bell icon because like I said, I'm not going to post these all up on a regular schedule. I'm just going to kind of churn them out as I can. So if you want to see them when they come out and uh, be sure you get notified by YouTube, uh, you have to click that bell icon because if you don't, then, then YouTube will probably not notify you because that's... they. That one really went sideways on me. Anyway, that's it today. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any specific questions or anything uh, in particular that you want me to put together one of these videos about while I'm doing this series, post them down in the comments. Um, put something down there for me to look at. Uh, if it's a question, I'll answer it. If it's a suggestion, then I'll uh, take it under consideration as I'm uh, putting these things together. So thanks a lot. I hope you found this helpful. Until next time, paddle up. Let's go looking for a fight.